Okay, so we are in Romans chapter 5, and we'll do a little quick review here. Who would like to say what we said already? Anything from the last time? Story of two men. Yes, the story of two men, yes. Adam, yeah, and the last Adam. First Corinthians 15 brings that out. Yes. You can go back and look at that. And Sin and death, right, okay. And, uh, and it was a physical death, right? I mean, here it is speaking, that's why people, they die. That's why people die, because of sin, physically, because... Sin is in the body. Anyway, I didn't mean to go ahead. Yeah, by yeah. the second Adam, we were reconciled unto God. Yeah. In the second Adam, we have life. Yeah. Eternal life to the second Adam. So the first Adam, there was, there was death, a physical death, um, spiritual death, and could be ultimately eternal. Um, and God doesn't send anyone to hell, but... Everyone in the world, in any way at all, then we could not enter into heaven where God is holy and perfect. Uh, and that's a, the big misconception in the world is that people think, well, it's okay to sin a little bit, and as long as I, as I, as long as I'm better, as long as my actions are better than my sins, then God will accept me because the, my actions will outweigh my sins, and God will look at that I'm pretty good. I'm a pretty good person generally, so God will accept me into heaven. Right? That's, that's the, the idea of the world. Sin entered into the world. And then we said that word sin there is, the word is isercomai. It means like it went into the world. Like this, it was introduced to the world. Sin. Before, before that, there was no sin. Let's make sure I didn't step on them. Before that, there was no sin in the world, right? So it, like this was the entrance into the world because of what this one man um, and it says, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so it passed through the human race. It went throughout all of the human race. Everyone who was born of the seed of, the seed of Adam, which is every human being on the earth, that we all came from Adam's seed, that everyone who was born, this death, the sin nature passed through unto us. So it came from Adam to his son to his son to his son, all the way to your grandfather, your father, and then into you and me. Uh, and so, and then it says in verse 13, For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. And this is, this is interesting here because this word imputed, the word is el logeo. It's not logizomai. So, which is interesting, but... It has a lot of the same types of thinking here because logizomai means to reason or to reckon. Logizomai means to like to charge to someone's account. And I think that Paul used it in Philemon chapter 1. He said that they would charge that to my account. So there was the only other place in the Bible where this Greek word is used. Um, so, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. But but what there because the seven dispensations, there was innocence, and then there was consciousness before the law. So there was a consciousness of sin. And yes, we know that in the Old Testament, Cain was held accountable for his sins. And so were many others, because man realized that he needed a Savior, so man realizes he needs a Savior, and that's why, 14, nevertheless, death reigned. The word here is basilio. Like the word basilica, it means to reign like as a king. There was no escaping death. There was, there was no one who escaped death except for maybe Enoch, possibly, and Elijah, right? So they, maybe the only two that like Enoch walked with God and he was no more, for God took him. But yet, death, maybe the only way that we could escape it is maybe if the rapture happens because Enoch was, in a way, he was raptured, wasn't he? He was snatched off the earth. Yeah. So, Enoch, if, you know, if we're alive, whenever the rapture happens, if we're still living at that time. 
Um, and, but yeah, but yes, but but it says nevertheless, death reigned like as a king from Adam to Moses. So it's the Mosaic law. What do we mean by the Mosaic law? What's that? Mo yeah, Moses. Yeah, like the, it was the law of Moses, right? The the the, the um, like the Ten Commandments, the six hundred and thirteen commandments in the Book of Leviticus. All of these commandments, which were too much, no one could live up to them all. You know, pick up, don't pick up sticks on the Sabbath. Uh, you can't go anywhere. You have to rest on the seventh day. I mean, totally, you have to. If your if your children were disobedient, you were to stone them to death. You know, it was it was pretty strict. Was that passed from God to them, Moses, to write those stuff? To write those okay, laws? okay. Any list, list, but like questions and stuff. Let's, let's just hold on until like the end. Yeah, just write down the questions because I'd have to think about what it is you're saying. So yeah, but questions. Hold off all questions till the end. That's why we'll have the wrap time. Uh, I mean, there's good questions. Um, but we don't want to deviate from what we're talking about here. So, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over the, them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him which was to come. So, in other words, they didn't sin like Adam. They didn't what? You didn't eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But this one sin, actually, it was like, it was like a, a match that burns down a whole forest fire. Or that burns down a whole forest. You know, like like this one... It, okay, good. See that? The word offense is para. Potoma. Para Potoma. Okay. And para Potoma means to... to fall... Alongside. In other words, to deviate from the right path, right? So to deviate from the right path. Okay, everybody read my reading, Brian, writing there. Parapatoma. Okay, to deviate. Um, from the right path. You want to see what it looks like in Greek? Are you in verse 14? Uh, 15. 15, sorry. Um, okay. That's so what it looks like in Greek. Okay, so... That's for the word offense. We're in, we're in 15. We went and went to 15. What does your say? Okay. Words. Let's see. This is pretty cool here, isn't it? So you got a road here, right? Hopefully I can do this right. Okay. Okay, there's the road. In other words, like the word harmatia. It means what? To miss the mark. So this word is related to this. In other words, parapatoma. Like, in other words, to deviate from the, like, it's not so bad. Now, like, like what, is, what does it mean, miss the mark? So, you here you have a target, right? And there's the bullseye right there. But you shoot over here. It's a pretty good shot from a long ways. But it's not perfect. And that's what this means, parapatoma. That, like, in other words, all have sinned and have fallen short of the charisma. And what word do you see in that word? Charis. Charis, which is what? Grace. Grace. So charis, so you have the word ma here. The results, of? the results of grace. This means the results of grace. So the results of grace, the free gift. So in other words, the, 
it says that that what that God gives the gift. What is the gift? The gift of eternal life. The free gift. And what is saying here that let's read on here, but not as the offense. It means the one, the one. There was only the one man, the one man, Adam, sinned. The one man, Adam, that he, uh, that he transgressed, as yours says, the, the offense that he deviated from the path. What? All he did was eat a little fruit off the tree. That didn't seem so bad, right? It was like, he didn't like, but, but because of this disobedience of this one man, that many became, that the world became sinners because of him. But then there was an obedience, there was the obedience of another man. And that was the man Jesus. And because of his obedience, now we receive righteousness. And then it says here, let's, let, let's read on what it says here, that, that, that of the offense of the one, many be dead, much more. Now this word much more appears several times in this passage here. Several times. Like if we go on down, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So let's... So in other words, it's kind of like this. Here's like a scale, right? Let's see if I can draw one. Okay, so over here, you got sin. But it says that much more the we can say what is the grace of God and what is the gift by grace. The grace of God has to do with who God is, and the gift by grace has to do with what God does. Who God is and what God does. In other words, like we know the character and nature of God, that God is love, that that his his love is everlasting. It's an everlasting love. And they, that's that he, but what he loved us. We we read it that while we were still sinners, while we were we were his enemies, the Bible says that while that we were ungodly, that Christ died for us, and so um, and so this is the character and nature of God, and so the character and nature of God would be that God gave His only begotten Son, because see there is the free gift. By the way, it wasn't free. It cost God something, didn't it? It cost God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, in John three sixteen, and that and so and we were His we are His purchased possession. We have been purchased. We've been bought with a price. That He purchased the church with His own blood, in Acts twenty twenty eight. So there was a price that was paid, and it was a hefty price that that God had paid. That God paid for us. And so when we realize like what God, who God is and what God has done for us, then we understand like doctrines like eternal. When we look at this here, it says much more, the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, it's the one man, Jesus Christ has abounded. So in other words, this offense right here, the sin, the offense, the parapatoma, which is right here, parapatoma, it would become really big. That's why the law entered in. The word the law, the law entered this par, par ice erkomai there. It means it came in alongside of sin. The law. Even in, in Romans 7, is it 7, 17, that every mouth would be stopped? Let's see here. Oh, no, no, it was given so that to make sin that it would appear sin and it would become exceedingly sinful. Where's that at? It says, so it was, that was the purpose of it, that it would appear sin, that it would make sin exceedingly sinful. This was the purpose of it, so that the law entered that the offense might abound. But then this gift right here, this gift right here would super abound now. Way more. So if we look here, the scale now is like this. God's grace. Yep, God's the free gift, which is by grace. 
more. Does this help? This was much more. It was, it was much more. It, was, it wasn't just that it equaled it. It was much more. It was much more. And that's why it says that the law entered that sin might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So when we grab a hold of this and understand it, it it's, we, we grab a hold of a great truth here. One sin would separate us from God forever. One sin, one, one, one thought, one sin would separate because if there's any unrighteousness, we could never stand before the presence of God. And that's why the law entered in so that I would realize, so we would realize that we need a Savior. We would realize that we would need Jesus, who was the perfect one, and that his free gift would far outweigh all of our sins. It's amazing when we think about it. And then, and it says in verse 16, And not only as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was one was by one to condemnation. That what does the Bible say? That why are people condemned? Because they do bad things? Because of what? Because they don't believe. Because they, they don't believe. If we turn to John chapter 3, it's because of unbelief. I think we touched on this before, didn't we? John 3, it says, okay, so, to believe. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That's, an, that's amazing, isn't it? That's not why Christ came. He didn't come to condemn the world. He didn't come to shame the world. That's what the Pharisees were doing, condemning. That's what the religions in the world were saying to do, to, to condemn. But Jesus didn't come for that reason. He came for sinners. He didn't come for the righteous. He came for sinners. Uh, so, that, so I would qualify as a sinner. That's why that the law was given. So I would say, hey, I qualify now, but I'm no longer a sinner because if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All the old things have passed away. All things are brand new. And I can no longer now be labeled as a sinner now. We're labeled as saints. And Paul the Apostle would always address, in, every, in, in most of all his books, he addressed it to the saints, to the saints who are, who are at Ephesus. To the, he addressed them as saints, the holy ones, hagios. They were holy. So let's go on. Let's read some more. Um, it says, verse 18, He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already. Already condemned. Already on their way because they haven't believed. That's what I was before I was unsaved. I mean, before I was saved, rather. John chapter 3, verse 18. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. That's why, so does God send people to hell? No, they're already on their way there, already. That's what it means to be saved. What is salvation? We are saved from hellfire. We are saved from, like, the three tenses of our salvation, right? From the, we are saved from, in the past, from the penalty of sin. That was, that's what this is talking about. We are being saved from the power of sin. And we will be saved in the future from the presence of sin. Because whenever our bodies, when we, we die, that if we're absent from the body, we're present with the Lord... We're going, to, we're going to heaven, we will no longer have an old sin nature. And no one knows, I don't think we have the, any fathom what that means. You mean like a no more fear, no more worry, no more insecurity, no more... So it says, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes is condemned already because he has believed, because he has not believed in the name of the only... Be of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, that men love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. Wow. They preferred the darkness. They were lovers of pleasure rather than or more than lovers of God. They were lovers of them own selves. It was like a from people don't come to church like they used to, like back in the 50s. 
Like that was like that's what everybody did. Everybody smoked cigarettes and everybody went to church, apparently, right? Coffee. Back then. <laughs> And they drank coffee. Matt Dillon like, would drink coffee, like, day and night, right? It's like, how do you do that? I don't know. But anyway, not as it was that one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. In other words, like, the sins of the whole world. That Jesus came, he died for how many sins? The sins of the whole world. Every sin. Every sin. He paid for it. So then why do people then go to hell if their sins are paid for? No, is it not? They didn't want to go. Um, so, um, but it says, it is of, the, the, the free gift is of many offenses. The whole world. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In John one twenty nine, John the Baptist knew that about him, didn't he? So the five-point Calvinist will say that Jesus only paid for the sins of the elect. That is is wrong. That is wrong. There's no way that that's correct doctrine. Because we know obviously that he paid for the sins of the whole world. He's, he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. He paid for every sin. That means everyone has an opportunity to go to heaven. Because their sins have been paid for. So it isn't like there were some that were elected to go to heaven and some elected to go to hell. You know, there's a lot of, like, that's why we, we, we want to be students, right? A Estudiantes de Biblia. Yeah. <laughs> so that we're not carried about by every wind of doctrine in Ephesians 4.14, right? To study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we can know the truth. And the truth sets us free. That's why we're to have a, a, a church that's about the Bible. And not about like doing a bunch of weird stuff, but we're about, we're about learning about God. We are about getting to know God. That's what we're about. It sets us free from the power of sin. That's what it does. That's, that's how are we delivered from the power of sin? The truth. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Aha. Uh -huh. That's what it says in the Bible. Another verse, right? Psalm 119, sin against thee. Psalm 119, yeah. yeah. It's like, wow. I, I, we're going to preach on that one of these days, but it isn't going to be one, one time. <laughs> 165 verses. So, anyway. So, in verse 17, we'll finish up by this. For if by one man's offense death reigned, so death reigned, like as a king, right? In other words, no one escaped death. No one can escape death. There's much more. Ooh, I love that word. In there, those two words. Much more. They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall what? Reign. Reign in life. Life will reign. Much more. I mean, when you think about the much mores, it was like, I mean, you know, there, there is... Isn't this interesting, the way how this is like played out here? Like, God gives the law so that sin becomes much more. It becomes, wow, I, like it, 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 it's pretty bad. It's, it's worse than I thought. My sins were worse than I thought. It wasn't, I mean, God thinks so. So much so that he sent Jesus to die for my sins. If I had been the only person that ever lived, and I just committed the, the sins that I committed, then Jesus would have had to come die for my sins. I mean, I never committed, like, murder and stuff like that. I never did those things, but yet, you know, it's still sinned, you know, still did, still what? Parapatoma, got off the path, harmatia, missed the mark. It's like, and so this was the purpose of it. But then now that sin has become exceedingly sinful, then now here comes grace and the free gift, which superabounds. All of that, it overtakes it. All of it. And so that's why we believe in what we believe in. So if, 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 if his righteousness and my sin just equaled each other, then is it possible that maybe that, like, every time I sin, then he would have to maybe die for my sins again? Like, what you did is what they're saying, right? Like, you know, you, you shot somebody, but it was self-defense. So you didn't break the law. So your, 
your shooting of the person was justified. Not guilty. Not guilty. But they could turn around and say, just as easily, that, oh, no, it was murder. Condemned. Just like that, condemned. Condemnation. Sentence. Hanging by the neck. Thank you so much. We thank you that your grace, your gift, superabounded way more than any of our sins, that God super grace, eternal life, the free gift, the charisma. We want to give anybody an opportunity, if you've never accepted Jesus before, accept him today as your Savior. He loves you. He paid for every one of your sins. And yes, you are a sinner. And you need Jesus. There's no one who doesn't need him in this world. He came and died on that cross. You paid the penalty of all my sins. Save me. I want to go to heaven when I die. I accept your gift of eternal life. And if you've said that prayer, you can give me a call. 727-452-7445. I'd love to talk with you about your faith, about your decision to accept Jesus. So amen.